Hello, I'm Eddie Striker and welcome to Viewer Takeover. This is Midnight Gamescast. We record every Tuesday afternoon at midnight, and we bring it to YouTube every Wednesday as the weekly wrap-up. Jesus, yep. that was so long ago. That was so long ago. You and I don't sing as much as Michelle and I do. No. <laughs> uh, and probably to the benefit of everybody watching. Uh, every Thursday is PlayStation VR Theater. Uh -huh. I did that on purpose. And every Friday is Viewer Takeover. Every today when we let you, the loyal GameCats, wow. let you take over the show. Uh, Which one just did? Well, that guy, <laughs> his name... Uh, is Andy Stryker. Hey! And Andy Stryker introduced our show today. Yes. He animated an introduction. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. People are talented, man. Yeah. People, deep, why, 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 doesn't, why isn't he running this channel? I don't know. It seems like maybe you should be running our channel instead, because if everything we did looked like that, maybe people would enjoy our content more. Right, yeah. Right? Stay tuned for more than 4 minutes and 32 seconds on average. Of How it. awesome would it be yeah. if you and I did a podcast weekly, but we were just animated, right? I bet that would be way more fun for people to watch. We wouldn't even. We could just sit there and re, like sit there and talk on the phone to each other and hit record, and then oh, yeah. we, we could take the studio down. We wouldn't have everything. to ever show up anymore. You'd have so much room in your house. I would do everything from bed. Yeah, this is where your cat would live. This whole room. Oh yeah, no, I would Tunnels. probably put a bed back in here where it once was. Oh yeah, that probably yeah. Right. Yeah. My one bedroom apartment now a no bedroom apartment. Yeah. As always, I'm Brian Paul, and to my right, your left, the king of all VR kings, the one, the only, Jeremy King. <laughs> See, I figured with Michelle not here, you can have both titles. All of the titles. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Mm. Uh, so, um, thank you, Andy Stryker, for sending us that viewer takeover introduction. If you would yeah, like to introduce you. next week's viewer takeover, well, I had to tell you this, you're out of luck. But if you want to get in the queue and be like... You know, next week's viewer take or next month's next month's viewer takeover. Make sure you send your short, sweet, hopefully sexy PlayStation VR viewer takeover introduction. I don't, I don't. I'm yeah. just saying words at this point. Yeah. Without parole at gmail dot com. Thank you and good night. Ah, yes. But Andy Stryker is one of many people we want to thank. Oh yeah, there's so many. Who who else do we want to thank, Jeremy? The, lo the most loyal of loyal, the Patreon supporters, all these people right down here. Thank you. I knew somebody had to sprinkle it out. Yeah, it's all sprinkled out. I, I think it's been weeks. You're just like rubbing it after the fact. I was like... I'm that, just sprinkling it out over and yeah, over. I, I don't know. And I think Lots I, of sprinkling. I think the Patreons, I think they got a little too extra they like, <laughs> <of> that. <laughs> a little too much tickle. Were you petting them? <laughs> Excellent. Uh, this tickling is now weird. Uh, so, Jeremy, uh, the, these people down here, they, they, they all, all of them. <laughs> they went to patreon.com slash without parole games. Yeah, they did. And all of them have given us at least one dollar a month or at least a more. dollar or more of right? their own money. Every month. So yeah. Thank you guys so 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 much for doing that. But thank Jeremy, you. what do those people down there get for their dollar or more every month? For a dollar or more a month, they get a little snippet we like to call the litter box over at what is it, Patreon? dot com slash without parole and they uh games games you're, you're doing so well keep yeah. it going I'm and uh excited where each week one of us uh assumes the role of host and we do a little two to 25 minute video <laughs> pretty much yeah where we show you you know something special about us a talent we tell you a story uh des once showed all like Fencing. He showed the whole fencing club that he works yeah, at. Yeah, you know, so there's been a, Michelle's played tunes, uh, Brian. And, and actually, this week yeah. uh, was Michelle's last litter box episode oh. for a while. Oh. She, she said goodbye to everybody. Um, you know, I wanted to thank everybody for, for being so supportive yeah. for all these months. You know, because, you know, the comments, they can be really mean sometimes. Yeah, they can. But, like, but no one actually said anything during that entire time about Michelle's pregnancy. No. And that that's, I mean, kind of mind blowing. So thank you guys for yeah, being thank so you. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we wish her well, of course. We of hope she's course. doing. We hope she's doing very well. Right. Uh, Getting so thank closer you. and closer to being a real mama. Oh my God, mama yeah. cat. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> but Michelle's not the only person on YouTube that changed her name from her name to something cat. That's right. I'm. I. I. 
I hear there's a lot of you now that have that. There's a lot of them, and, and man, I gotta say, it's getting harder and harder to keep up, because not only do I have to figure out who we've already given a shout out to, yeah. but we also need to try to not miss any new ones. Yeah. And on top of that, there are names, there's one in here that I'm not sure if it's new or if it's always been his name. <laughs> yeah. So let's just give a quick shout out to all of the new people in our little YouTube GameCat hey. community. Just change your name on YouTube and you will also get a shout out. Yeah. This week, we got the Game Cat, formerly known as I'm Dead to You X. Yeah, he changed it. Tommy the Cat in a VR hat. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Mad Dog, the Game Cat. Hey. Rickus Rook, the hey. Game Cat. Soma Game Cat. Meow. Jin Karen, the Game Cat. Almost like Jim Carrey. Is it Jin Karen? Do you think that's right? Jin Karen? Jin we- Karen? Jin Karen? Who knows? This is the one I wasn't sure of. It's 2KY Cat or 2Kentucky Cat. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel like we've said his name before, but it might have been different. If yeah. you didn't change your name to B Cat, then hey, you're part of the family, but family by default. You got grandfathered in. Uh, we also got VR Vin Cat Binzel Game. Hey, Binzel Game. Wow. Wait, you, yeah. One more time because I screwed it up. VR Vin Cat Binzel Game. Nice. Strange. Yeah. Uh, Game Cat Troy, which is Troy Powell, who hey, uh, all d- right. done a couple of our viewer takeover introductions, musician. He created a new YouTube account so we could have one Sweet. Uh, with our name. And then finally, Nibble the Game Cat, one oh, of our uh, newer Patreon supporters. Yeah. Uh, what a fantastic name. Nibble the Game Cat has a <laughs> Leisure Suit Larry avatar from one of the original Leisure Suit Larry games. Wow. Oh, yeah. As soon as I saw it, I was like, you are OG as fuck. Yeah, no fuck. shit. Leisure Suit Larry. Yeah. Yeah. I played that game when I was way too young to. <laughs> yep. And uh, I never played it. My parents found out. Yeah. Didn't go well. I'm sure. If yep. You couldn't see a movie like indiana jones till you had moved out i remember when my dad discovered that i was playing i was like look you can get in bed with this girl and he was and i like didn't even know what it meant and he and and then the censored bar was going up and down yeah and he was like yeah you're not playing this ever again (laughs) i was like i don't know what's going on yeah (laughs) (laughs) uh so thank you all the game cats thank you all of the uh what what are we going to call these people who changed their name Uh, i don't know because game cats is kind of the the overarching term and then there's the, the, the then the then the loyalist of all loyal game cats are the Patreon supporters. Yeah. And then what about the people who changed their name? Right. Are those the ones we're married to because like they changed their name? Out of the litter box instead of like out of the closet. Oh they're god. Out as a new game they cat. they came out as a kitty. They came out as a kitty. They, comment below. We <laughs> we want to know what you'd like to be called because all of this yeah. sounds horrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> hey, I came out of the. <clears throat> The uh, little box. All right. Every week on Viewer Takeover, <laughs> we uh, we scour the videos so, and we uh, and we look for all of our favorite comments of the week. Yeah. Uh, I gotta say, <clears throat> there were a ton of awesome comments this week, but there weren't a lot of ones that would like uh, like induce conversation. Yeah. Uh, so I had a tough time finding good comments this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, so make sure if you have a good conversation piece uh, to to comment in the comments below, do a little hashtag Viewer Takeover for us. Make it easier to find. There you go. Uh, but let me start. Can I read the first one? Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, the first one comes from okay. Ingo. Ingo Bauer. Ingo Bauer wrote on the Inpatient First Impression video. That was our live stream. He wrote, Bummer, another two to three hour experience game mm. they expect you to pay a hefty VR tax for. Yeah. I really love the headset at launch. There were so many games. Bloody good proper ones, too. Save for the odd exception like RE7, it's been a continuous ride down the crapper ever since... Unfortunately, hmm. huh? Well, so here's what. What do you? What did you think about the PlayStation VR game lineup at launch? Uh I thought it was a good display of what it can do. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the potential of it. I thought it was all right. Yeah. Um, but it, but it was a pretty typical launch by yeah. all standards. Like nothing below or above normal. You know, right. better than a Nintendo launch. Usually they have two titles that are worth it. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, and then and then, it, but it wasn't actually until January that we got Resident Evil Seven. Yeah. So I think people forget that too. It was like we had like a couple months couple there months, yeah. where it was like, what's coming? Yeah. yeah. And then something came all over our faces, and uh, it was amazing. It was unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, and then and then like, even though we've gotten like some games that would be might be considered like big AAA titles. Yeah. I don't think we actually got another big AAA title till Skyrim. Till Skyrim. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. But that's the thing. I, I think I, that's a lot of space. Yeah, because I mean, the, it's still a newer system, if you will. You right. know what I mean? And you it, you've been around a long time. Yeah. You worked at GameStop. Yeah. You've seen a lot of console launches. Oh yeah. This is not uncommon. 
No. Like, I think... Trickle stat, you know? In fact, even when the PlayStation 4 launched, like, let's talk, you know, as recently as that. Yeah. Like, I want to say almost the first two years were kind of rough going. They were, yeah. You know, they were... A few good titles, you know? Yeah, a couple good exclusives every year. Yeah. But there was a lot of shit sprinkled in there. A lot of shit sprinkled in, a lot of just upscaled games from the previous generation. Yep. They were, like, just... Like just a lot of crap, yeah. You know, a lot, a lot of filler, yeah. And so I think people forget this all the time that like we just passed the one year mark back in October. I mean, that's it. I know it seems longer than that, but it really hasn't been that long. I'm gonna like in in, in with games like Seeking Dawn announced mm-hmm. uh, with with uh, with I, I hate. The, the crappy thing is, is I used to have like the, the I used to have the impatient in this list of these are games we're looking forward to. Yeah, you know, but like Apex Construct looks amazing. Yeah. You know, where Moss looks amazing. Yeah, there's all these games that are that really in the look pipeline good. Yeah. that are coming and, uh, and uh, so much stuff that's not even announced yet that's probably huge. And it, I mean, people forget too with VR, right? So video games and the normal way to play a game, we already knew it worked. And yeah. people loved it. This was a, a real gamble that a few different, you know, formats took on the gamble of releasing a VR headset, you know? And, I mean, of course, now it's gaining, you know, notice. People are enjoying it, and it's growing. They're selling more, and now more games, people are like, let's give that a try. Let's be the next big game, you know? That's got to be coming, you know? Absolutely. Because it's so hard to to distinguish yourself, say, on the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One X. Yeah, yeah. Because there are thousands of games. So many. Right? Every yeah. week, 20 new games come out, and you're yeah. like, I don't even know what's good. I've never heard of any of these. Yeah. But like on the Premonition. What is this title? Who would have thought? <laughs> I'd like that in VR. Yeah. 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 But on PlayStation VR, there's like one game that comes out maybe a week. Yeah. And the last couple of weeks have been barely that. That's it. It's yeah. like, so if you want your game to be like seen by 2 million people who are interested in playing it. Yeah. Then PSVR is the place to do it. Absolutely, right? Like that's why the Vita has somehow held on for so long <laughs> yeah. because, like, the the attach rate, the number of games people buy for it, mm-hmm. is astounding. Yeah, not a lot of people bought a Vita, but everyone that has a Vita buys a shitload buys of games. games. Yeah, and so that's the same thing that's happening with VR, and I think even to a higher degree. Yeah. Uh, so like, give it some time. This early adopters, I mean, I don't want to say I don't want to tell them to like learn to be quiet. Yeah. But like, know what, you, or know what you're in for, I yeah. think is the right way to say it. Yeah. Like, if you buy something day one, expect it to not be good <laughs> or yeah. like see its true potential yeah. for a couple of years. Yeah. So like, just it's, we're all in this together. Mm-hmm. There are plenty of great games to play in the meantime. Yeah. And, and and I think a lesson to learn here is try games that you wouldn't normally try. They're different in it, VR. Every yeah. time I try something I wouldn't expect to like, yeah. I'm constantly surprised. I'm like, yeah. that this was a lot of fun. Yeah. And I would have never played it on my TV. Yeah. That's it. Mm-hmm. All right. You're up, Asia. All right. I love explaining that to people. <laughs> Why does that guy keep calling that young man Asia? Asia, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny to see it all the time. And that's not something we made up. That's an old kind of a joke, is it not? Oh, I, I didn't. I didn't know. I don't know. I, I thought, thought I've heard up that. With please. It. Europe, Asia. Well, maybe I haven't. Maybe I'm just so familiar with us saying it. Because when we first started doing it, yeah, I I, I would say Europe, and then uh, it was, and then, and then it Michelle, was Michelle would yeah. Michelle would say North America, yeah. and I'd say China, and then she'd say another country, and yeah. we'd go back and forth until we finally condense it down to Europe, Asia, Asia, yeah. And so it was like a bigger thing to us first, and That's so I true. I you're, thought we came up with this. No, joke. You're, you're probably right. I could be yeah. wrong. Yeah, no, I, totally I'm usually right. wrong. It's just my brain I'm floating. So, so, Vox Timmy. Timmy. The Inpatient First Impression. Oh, popular video. I feel like I'm road raging my comments tonight. Ooh. Was he? Maybe. I can't believe how disappointing The Inpatient is. 40 bucks and from a huge studio too. Maybe I'll regret this comment in the morning, but I just feel like we should have such bigger titles by now. Sigh. <laughs> this has me worried about Bravo Team sucking a big one now too. I've just been frustrated over the last three months with no mind-blowingly good games like Res Evil 7 coming out or near release soon. Sigh. Sigh? Sigh. Uh, so this is similar to the last uh, last comment, except yeah. with a slightly different slant. Yeah. Now that we know the Impatient is not the game we expected it to be, yeah. that's how I'm going to phrase it from now on. Yeah. Because, like, for what it is, it's fine. Mm-hmm. But, like, it's certainly not the game we expected it to be. Yeah. Um... What do you? What are your expectations from future supermassive games? 
from what I'm hearing from everybody, I mean, I, let's hope they're not just riding the success of how the format of, you know, uh, yeah, until done, until done. Yeah. <laughs> that rail shooter type of story driven, choose your own adventure. Let's, I mean, you can only get away with that a couple times, you know, and yeah. it's not translating well, obviously to the type of game that we thought this game was, you know, but, uh, I don't know. I will say that I feel like hopefully the inpatient is like their one big miss. Yeah. Right. Uh, like Ready at Dawn was like this awesome studio who like, <clears throat> you know, made those like PSP God of War games and yeah. made Dexter for PSP. And mm-hmm. they made, <clears throat> excuse me. They made all these awesome like spinoff games and then they were finally given, you know, the keys to the kingdom. Like Sony was like, you can make a PlayStation 4 game for us. Yeah. And they were like, sweet. Yeah. And they made <laughs> the Order 1886. Oh, and yeah. it was like, oh, Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> this was your chance. Was that a launch or right after launch? That it was supposed to be near launch. It got delayed and delayed, and then it turned yeah. out to be like a three-hour overpriced game. Oh, it was, it, I bought it. Oh, I've still got I, you, oh, you still got it. I got the collector's edition. Oh, no. It's three hour, It's something like three hours long, and I didn't finish it. Oh, I didn't either. Which is I was crazy. so bored. I was like, oh, my God. Anytime they made you walk really slow from point uh. to point, I was like, I just want to shoot stuff. Yeah. Or I want to run. I felt like I need to like call it a loss and get as much back as I can for this and trade it in now. Yeah, that's I'm, what I did. <laughs> it's just sitting up there in the corner, my corner of shame. Oh. Uh, so, but but that's the kind of thing here. I'm looking at like super massive games being like they had a hit, mm-hmm. they had another hit, yeah, and then boom, yeah. You know, it's not in the sophomore slump; it's like the junior slump. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> the next thing is Bravo Team from them. Yeah. Oh, I knew it. Oh. I'm glad you're not pregnant because now I actually get to hit I someone. I know, you can. I smacked Michelle three times last week and I was like the lightest, gentlest <laughs> smack ever. It's like a brush against the cheek. Right? Uh, so, we've Supermassive Games has proven they can do shooting games really well. Yeah. Right? At least with Rush of Blood. Yeah. So, I still have a lot of hope for Bravo Team. Right? Because it's still, it seems to be um, kind of teleportation based. Well, yeah. a good album. There's, there could be three songs out of like 10 that are solid the rest are just like all right yeah i mean you know a studio can release so many good games you know and have a few misses but see that's i think that's the other part of the problem here supermassive games was a studio that was putting out one game every three years yeah four years actually until done proper was in development hell forever it's supposed to be a ps3 game and oh, if you look right. back yes, at those videos, right, yeah. it looks completely different, yeah. right? It was actually move supported and like all this other stuff, and it was very strange. And uh, and actually, I still want that game. If they put that game in VR, the original Until Dawn with move support, hell, yeah. let's do that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then and then all of a sudden, they're pumping out games left and right. Yeah. And it and it's like so was this was this an issue? Like did did these did there was they, were they not properly staffed to put out this many games in such a short period of time? Yeah, maybe. I have no idea. Yeah. But but like I have got my fingers crossed for Bravo Team and if they can make that game good then my faith will be restored. But if that game sucks then that's it's it. it's kind of like two strikes you're out. Yeah. Right? At least two in a row and you're out. Yeah. Uh, you can't you can't you can't keep giving money to uh, something that's a not big working. Gamble. Yeah. Uh, so as it is, I already have t- I own two copies of the Impatient. Uh, which <laughs> I'm like so I just spent eighty dollars on the Impatient uh, and I and I finished it in two hours. That's terrible. Yeah, hopefully by now, hopefully by the time this thing airs, I finished it like three or four times. Maybe you'll be like, I'm starting to love it. Yeah. Let's hope so. My review will tell you everything you need to know. And it probably came out two days ago. <laughs> All True. Right. Who's up? I'm up. Next up is the Game Shark with a Q. Game Shark. Yeah, like Quote. Shack. Ah, the Game Shack. The ga- oh, damn it, there is an R. The Game Shark. Yep. Uh, from PSVR this week. He, he writes, that's not how integral is pronounced. Did I miss that? Yeah, there's a... Uh, so what we do pretty much on PSVR this week is uh, is is we watch trailers and we talk over them. Yeah, it's very much like theater, except we have scripted stuff that we read to g- give as much information as possible. Yeah, like a top ten. Exactly. Yeah, it's very much a top ten list. And uh, and, and and so I'm sitting here like you know, and, I, and I'm like, and I'm just reading off a paper into the microphone, mm-hmm. and Des is sitting next to me, and we're both you know both reading our parts. And I and I and I read this thing. I'm like, and, and the choices you make are integral to the gameplay. And I literally stopped and went, "Is that how it's pronounced? Like yeah. that doesn't sound right in my head." And he goes, "I think you can pronounce it either way." And I was like, "The choices you make are integral to the gameplay." I was like, "That's fine." And I kept going. Yeah. I was like, and 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 
but it, it was in the back of my head yeah. for the rest of the day yeah. until I edited the video. Yeah. And then I edited the video, and while I was editing the video, I was like, that's not how you say that word. <laughs> it's, but some people do. Yeah. People say integral all the time, and it's integral, yeah. or that's how I would pronounce it. And it just it bothered the crap out of me. And this and, dude called you and out? I knew somebody yeah. out there. And apparently, it's the game shark. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I knew somebody was going to say it, and, and, and he did. Nice. Um, I just you wanted to overdub them, like, integral, I you know? Almost did, because yeah. that's how much it bothered me. So, uh, so I just want to say, you're not alone. Uh, although I think people in people in European territories say it differently, so I think that's why we didn't get more comments about like it. Spelling color and those certain words with O U R. Yeah, it's just like the well, yeah, because you say those the same way, but you just yeah. spell them differently. Spell them differently. Yeah. So this is this is one of those things Bad that was like comparison. I think you can say it integral, but I usually say it integral. Integral. And I just thought it was hilarious that someone called me out on it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they got you. Yep. All right, you're up, Asia. Martin Roberts. Hey, Martin Roberts. Here they lie. Review. That's an old one. I brought this a year ago. Wait, I bought this probably, Probably right? bought A yeah. year ago, and still to this day have only managed about 20 minutes into it. <laughs> uh, it gets into my head and scared the crap, scrap, crap, out of me <laughs> to the point of throwing off my headset and not putting it on since. The game is brill, but my nerve is screwed. <laughs> so here they lie is, I mean, not the scariest game Yeah. Uh, in VR. There's There's... Some scary moments. Which one was it? Is that the black and whitish one? Very monochromatic, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that one wasn't too bad. How much of it did you play? The demo? Yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, there's, there's definitely some jump scares. I definitely screamed a few times. And of course, it was an early game. Yeah, you know, so yeah, like, that was a very early one. Just being in that world was like no. very, very disconcerting for me. Yeah. I, was like, I was like, this is a world full of like weird-ass people yeah. doing crazy-ass shit. And there's like a thing. There are these monsters with like antlers coming out of their head that are trying to kill me. Yeah, yeah. And I was weird. like, and it was like very stressful. Sorry, time clock. Oh no, I checked. <laughs> so, uh, and, but but the reason I added this comment is because because you just played Resident Evil Seven. Yeah. Uh, or you're getting back into it. Yeah. Um, I've never gotten to a point where I was like, I can't play this game because it's too scary. Yeah. Do you feel like that's a possibility for you? Because that's sort of why you stopped to begin with, right? It was, yeah. I mean, I guess, yeah. It, I mean, it stopped me for a while just because it was like, ugh. But for some reason, that's when I wasn't streaming it. For some reason, streaming it doesn't feel like him playing it alone. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. But if I was doing it alone, yeah, I would see, like, I don't want to deal with that kind of a stress right now. Like, that's, it's creepy. Yeah. It's like stressful walking around, like, ugh. You know, yeah, and that's, and that's why I played the impatient, uh, did the live stream without comments on, yeah, because I didn't, I wanted to feel alone, I wanted that sense of isolation, I wanted to, to play it the way they wanted me to experience it, yeah. Um, so I was curious, I, I, I definitely, there have been moments, trust me, where like I have to take off the headset, recompose myself, and be like, it's just a game, Brian, yeah. And I think even games like Don't Knock Twice and Paranormal Activity, which are like lesser on the scare factor yeah like they're still scary games but like man they made me stop and go Whew. craziness all right uh crutch 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 asked on viewer takeover he said challenge hey you have the option of being stuck in a vr world for 10 hours with no breaks been there well i took breaks i i, I got to true. go to the bathroom and get more coffee uh your only two games are silent hill and katamari damasi which do you choose and let's pretend that Silent Hill is not PlayStation 1 Silent Hill. Let's pretend it's a very scary Silent Hill VR game. Like a newer one. Like a newer like one. PT. Like PT. Yeah. Um, or or Katamari Damacy. I think I'd blow my brains out after listening to Katamari Damacy music for 10 hours. Oh, that's true. And like, whatever. Right? The, the, the king of all cosmos king. and shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love those games, but 10 hours, I usually play them at like an hour at a time. Yeah. I think yeah, I lose my you mind. Get, yeah. yeah. I mean, it would look great, but look great PT for 10 hours right that game was intense yeah that demo oh my god yeah um, that was before VR in that game yeah. and I remember that was one of the last things besides like Outlast that really got my heart racing on a non VR screen oh man yeah. oh yeah you'd have to go with it you'd have to do the Silent Hill just to experience it I just think just for 10 straight hours I think though. knowing that I was trapped in the game for 10 hours that would make it even better. It'd make it even scarier. It would be make like, it scarier. I am actually stuck in I'm here. I'm stuck in here. Yep. Nothing uh, I can do. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm totally down. I, for me, this, the more scary games, the better. I know there's people out there that are like, enough with the scary games already. Yeah. I'm like, there can't be enough scary games for me. If every game that came out was scary, I'd be a happy kitty. <laughs> yeah. All right, and finally, you're up, Asia. Ken Ball, 1980. Hey, Ken Ball. Our very first PSVR top 10 list. Yeah, you don't have to list all the games, just a comment. All right. Oh my, how far we've come since then, exclamation points. Thanks, PSVR WP, for the great content. Now, I, I wasn't I wasn't just including this to give us our, ourselves a pat on the back, um, but it was funny to look back at our first top ten list yeah. with me and Michelle mm-hmm. sitting there. Uh, I was we were putting it all together Christmas Eve day. Yeah, right, like rushing as fast as we could to get this video created, and it, it was even I was even late for Christmas Eve because of it. Um, but the, here's the list. Here's the very first top ten list, and this is back like uh, again Christmas Eve. Yeah. All right. So it only been out for two and a half months. Yeah. Number ten, Starship Disco. Now, as much as I love Starship Disco, the fact that it was on a top ten list is mind boggling. Yeah, really. Number nine, The Assembly, which is still a very good game, I think underrated. Uh, number eight, Drive Club VR. Strangely enough, I think that's exactly where it was on the last top ten <laughs> list. Uh, number seven, Super, Super Hypercube. Hypercube. Yeah, that was a good one, uh, but it's like 3D Tetris. Um, Probably not on a top 10 list these days. Number no. six, Pinball FX VR2. Wow. If you can get that on sale, I say you should still pick it up. Here they lie. Number five, Here They Lie. Yeah. I think the only reason that doesn't make top 10 lists anymore for me is because it gives too many people motion sickness. Yeah. I'm like, a little, it, little bit of a queasiness, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we, you know. Number four, Rush of Blood. Yeah, rightfully so, still. I, still belongs in the yeah. upper echelon of PSVR games. Yeah. Number four, Eagle Flight. Yeah, no. I, th- I think that's a boring title. Oh, I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, you did. Like but it was that. also like our first open, like our first glimpse into open world VR games. True. Uh, number two, this is where it starts <laughs> to get mind boggling. Yeah. Is the Star Wars Battlefront X Wing VR mission. Yeah, really. So we had all of these games. We just <laughs> talked about that the launch lineup was pretty damn good. Yeah. But we chose, or I chose probably. Yeah. Number two was a VR free VR mission. Yeah. One mission. In Star Wars Battlefront. Did yeah. you play it? No, I didn't, what? actually. Yeah, I never Wait, played that. If I give you do you have Battlefront? No. If I give That's you I if know. I give it to you today, will you promise to play just the VR mission by next week? It's I like promise. twenty minutes long. All right. It's actually really good. Yeah. You're a Star Wars fan. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh dude, you get to push all these buttons and stuff. It's yeah. like oh it's for the, it's definitely made for the fan. But number one yeah. was the demo. <laughs> uh, all these great games are out and, and we and we chose the demo for Resident Evil Seven as it was our a damn number good one. demo. It was so incredible. Yeah. It was the first thing to ever instill me with that much fear. Yeah, it was awesome. To be scared of opening a door in a demo. Yeah. <laughs> and then to finally get the game and realize that the whole game is that fucking terrifying yeah i couldn't believe it and it looks that good oh somebody you know? some somebody at capcom was like that brian paul we're gonna make his little dream come true this week <laughs> yeah so that was a, just a little quick look back at our first top 10 list yeah ever that's wow all right jeremy i know you gotta get out of here so let's yep. let's, let's wrap up the viewer takeover wrap up the viewer takeover <laughs> into a little Ball, ball of yarn yeah like, woof, 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 woof. kitties all right guys thank you so much for tuning in let us know what you thought of this video because michelle's not here yeah can oh. we can can we handle this on our own for the next couple months i think we can i think so I'm pretty confident pound it bro <laughs> blow it up Ugh. yeah so for the midnight games cast i'm brian paul i'm jeremy king oh this is how we close the other show and we'll see you next <laughs> week the very bottom of the screen there's a thing viewer takeover click the button there you go. viewer takeover folder in the very bottom yeah no 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 left oh. left there you go uh, double click the one that's already highlighted this Maybe. is the that's it yeah alright you can uh, X that out this one here uh, just hit escape Or double click the image. Now exit out. And exit that out. And you can exit that out. Don't save it. And we're good. All right.